is this better than this? Or is this better than this? Or are they too close to really care? Let's go. What's up guys, Joe here from scruffyarms.com and the Scruffy Fam. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the 270 Winchester to the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, I did a cartridge comparison um, a couple months ago on the 6.5 PRC versus the 270 Winchester, and we talked about how ballistically those things are so similar, there's really no reason to compare them. And what the, the 6.5 PRC did was it brought the 270 Winchester in to the current era of firearms. And, you know, I've owned a 6.5 PRC, and I own a 270 Winchester, and shooting both of them, it's really six of one, half dozen of the other. From the hunting that I do, I'm not shooting anything past 600 yards. My 270 Winchester is perfectly fine to handle all of that. Uh, it is in a Winchester Model 70. It's a very, very nice rifle. It made no sense for me to keep a budget 6.5 PRC when I had a high class 270 Winchester. So I kept the 270 because it met a capability that fit the bill for my hunting. Then I came into a 6.5 Creedmoor and we did a 6.5 Creedmoor versus 6.5 PRC. I think I did that. And the 6.5 PRC is better than the 6.5 Creedmoor. It just is. It has about 200 uh, feet per second more in velocity, it acts like a 270. Well, when I said that my favorite rifle last year was my Winchester Model 70 and 270 Winchester, I got some comments about my 308, I got some comments about the 65, and so I decided, you know what, let's, let's talk about and compare these and see what really is the difference between the two and what are the applications that they both, that all of these fulfill. And we're going to compare the 270 and the 65 Creedmoor because I think this is a really, really important thing to understand about both of these. I would say that the trifecta of the all around deer hunter rifles are 30-06, 308, 270 Winchester. If you want that thing that can kill all the deer, be good for elk, those are the three things you get is one of those, 30-06, 308, 270 Winchester, and that's been the case since the 1950s. This is no longer the case, okay? And I, I really wanna drive that point home that when I was growing up and I was looking at rifles 20 plus years ago, your choices really laid down to, okay, look, if you are a blind or deer stand hunter, you got yourself a 243 or a 308 because everything was be close range. It didn't matter. New shooters, 243 always. If you were going to be hunting out west, you need something to shoot flat and far, you got a 270. And if you were primarily hunting elk, but you sometimes hunted deer, you got a 30 out six and you could do everything. That's what the thought process was when I was first looking at rifles. And I was living in Colorado at the time and I bought a Remington 700 and 30 out six because that fit the bill. I didn't do any research, I didn't look at any ballistics. I got that the Remington 700 30-06, threw a scope on it, went out, shot, and that was my hunting rifle for probably 15 years. Well, today's ballistics have changed dramatically and all of the old thoughts of what we need to harvest an animal need to be brought into the current era of efficiency of firearms and efficiency of cartridges. And so today, what I want to talk about is the differences between these two. Now, both of these, both of these, the, the 270 is 130 grain. This is 129 grain. I'm using the American Whitetail uh, line of ammunition for this today because I want to, want to do apples to apples here and as close to grain weights as I could get. That about 130-ish grain for the 6.5 Creedmoor is extremely popular. Uh, it is extremely versatile for use as a hunting caliber. The 270 Winchester is 130 grain. You do 130 grain, 140 grain, 130 grain is like the gold standard. So 
looking at these two, that's what we're gonna go with. So we're gonna use all of the box stated stuff from here. I am gonna adjust for uh, barrel length. Both of these on Hornady's website, so you can see here. Both of these on Hornady's website say they're using a 24 inch test barrel. Neither one of my rifles is a 24 inch, they're both 22 inch barrels. So because they're both 22 inch, we do our math conversion that I talked about in the I like short barrels video. And we've got that set up on a ballistic chart that I've pulled up from the website. So I'm gonna pull you guys over. We're gonna look at this, we're gonna talk about it, and we're gonna see what the difference is between these two when it comes to velocity and energy because that's that's the really important part is velocity, energy, and our drop, okay? Because we wanna know what our holds are gonna be out to 600 yards. I did 50 yard increments in this. Um, I think most people don't understand that the in-betweens matter a lot. So let's get into this. I'm gonna bring you guys over uh, to the computer screen and, and we'll get going. Okay, so on the left here, we've got the 270. On the right, we've got the 6.5 Creedmoor. So we're gonna talk about 100 yard zero with both of these and we're gonna look at muzzle velocity. So right off the bat, there's about a 200 foot per second difference in muzzle velocity between the two, okay? There's a 200 feet per second velocity difference, just like the 6.5 PRC and the 6.5 Creedmoor is about a 200 um, foot per second difference. What does that mean downrange? Well, let's look at it. So first, as we look at our velocities here, the 270 Winchester starts at 3,000 and immediately drops to 2883 at 50, 2769 at 100, and we're losing about 200 foot per second every 100 yards after that, okay? At 600 yards, we're carrying 1,774 uh, feet per second velocity. When we talk energy, we're starting at 2598 foot-pounds of energy at the barrel, and we're going down about 300 foot-pounds of energy out to 400 yards, and then we drop to about 200 foot-pounds, okay? So that, that's pretty significant when we go from... as we're going for these 100 yard increments that we start to drop that, okay? So then we look at the 6.5 Creedmoor. And I wanna look at the velocity and energy, then we'll talk about trajectory. So we start at 2800, and then we're losing, right off the bat, about 200 foot per second at 100. And then, this is the really crazy thing, same deal, just about 200 foot per second all the way until we hit 500 yards and then it stabilizes and at 600 yards we're getting 1,709 feet per second. So it stabilizes and only loses about 100 foot per second at 600 yards from 500 yards. And the crazy thing is the 270, 1,774 feet per second, 6.5 Creedmoor, 1,709 feet per second. That is a pretty good barometer there to tell you about how the modern ones can carry their velocity. Energy wise, we're at 2246 at the muzzle and again, we're about 300 uh, foot pounds of energy reduction until we get to 200 yards and then we're about 200 after that the rest of the way, where we cap at 837 foot-pounds of energy at 600 yards. So a 270, 900 foot-pounds of energy about, and about 840 foot-pounds of energy on the 6.5 Creedmoor, okay? So as far as velocity and energy goes, these things are in the same wheelhouse. When we look at if you wanna go with what can kill a deer, we'll go on the high side and go 1,000 foot-pounds of energy. I got a lot of pushback when I said 900 foot-pounds of energy. 900 foot-pounds of energy will kill a deer with the right shot placement. 
at that distance, there's too many variables to say you're going to be absolutely precise. So we'll go with a thousand foot pounds of energy to kill a deer. Holding to that, the max range you can kill a deer with a 6.5 Creedmoor in this loading is 500 yards. Okay, that's your thousand foot pounds of energy is 500 yards. 270 Winchester, 550 yards. Okay, so. You could kill a deer 50 yards farther with the 270 than you could with the 6.5 Creedmoor. All right. So then we're going to go up to the drop. Okay. The drop for the 270 is almost identical to the drop for the 6.5 until we get out to passing 250 yards. This is where it's crazy. At 200 yards, the 270 Winchester is dropping 3.1 inches. The 6.5 Creedmoor is dropping 3.7. At 250 yards, so just another 50 yards, the 270 is dropping 6.5 inches, and the 6.5 Creedmoor is dropping 7.7 .7 inches. So the 270 dropped about three inches more, you drop four inches more with the 6.5 Creedmoor, okay? You've got about a two inch difference in drop until we hit 400 yards, then we've got a four inch difference in drop. All the way out to 500 yards, we've got a nine inch difference in drop and at 600 yards, we have a 10 inch difference in drop between the 270 and the 6.5 Creedmoor. Okay, so when we look at these numbers, this may surprise some people to see that the 270 ballistically is better than the 6.5 Creedmoor. When we talk about velocity, we talk about energy, we talk about drop, the 270 Winchester beats out the 6.5 Creedmoor head to head. Why is that? Well, the reason for that is that it has a much higher powder volume than the 6.5 Creedmoor, okay? So we're getting more velocity. That 200 feet per second velocity difference is huge. That's why when the 6.5 Creedmoor was developed, they also developed the 6.5 PRC. To get the type of performance out of the 6.5, they went to the PRC, which is basically the modern version of the 270 Winchester. So it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that the 270 Winchester beats the 6.5 Creedmoor in almost every category when it comes to hunting. I will say that the 6.5 Creedmoor does beat the 270 Winchester when it comes to bullet selection and recoil. A 270 Winchester, you're going to get 130, 140, maybe 150 grains. 150 is a little heavy, but you can get between those. 6.5 Creedmoor, you can go down to 100, 110 grain, up to 156 with the right twist rates and loadings. That is pretty impressive, and I think that is where the 6.5 Creedmoor shines. But to lead to why I use primarily the 270 over the 6.5 Creedmoor is what you can see from the numbers. I prefer to have a higher energy dump on a deer than not. And if I've got something that provides better ballistic advantage, I'm going to use that. I think the 6.5 Creedmoor is a fantastic cartridge. I think that it is extremely versatile and is very good to use. So much so that I have family members that are going to be using that for hunting this next season. And so when I look at that, what do I think the 6.5 Creedmoor shines at is I think it shines as someone who doesn't want a lot of recoil, wants something that's versatile, but also wants something that has pretty decent ballistics. The 6.5 Creedmoor will do that. I think someone that has a 270 Winchester is somebody who falls from my generation 
that doesn't want to let go of the old classics. And I don't see any reason to have to change from that right now. Do I see the 270 Winchester going anywhere? No, I really don't. But it is a very limited window that you can use this for. Can you use it for varmint hunting? Yes, you absolutely can. Can you use it for elk hunting? Yes, you absolutely can. Is it the best choice for both of those? Probably not. As a deer rifle and a deer round, the 270 is perfect. That is right at home where it goes. Where the 6.5 Creedmoor beats it is that the 6.5 Creedmoor can be a fantastic predator, pronghorn, deer, target, competition. It just fits the bill on more options than what the 270 Winchester does. So guys, at the end of the day, depending on your application and what you're trying to do, both of these are fantastic cartridges. But for as far as ballistics goes, the old tried and true 270 Winchester is better than the 6.5 Creedmoor. Let me know what you guys think. Let's carry on the conversation. I hope you guys are all having a happy new year. We have more of these talks coming up. Next, we'll talk about the difference between the 308 and the 270. That should be a fun one. Until then, guys, stay safe, stay blessed, and I'll see you next time.